All right. Thank you guys very much. This is Tesla Coffee. Uh, Brandy will be joining us shortly. And he's written two books, um, Tesla, uh, Elon Musk, about Elon Musk. And one of the things he's been talking about quite a bit, he has his own YouTube channel. He's been talking a lot about um, all the different things um, that people are not including in evaluation for Tesla. Currently today, most people still think Tesla to be a car company. They have a PE ratio similar to Chipotle. <laughs> they have similar PE ratio to um, a little bit higher, still higher than the car companies, but certainly not uh, valuing it for all the potential uh, considerations. So there's probably, you know, what would you say? I'm sure you're going to say robots. You're going to say Tesla Semi. You're going to say Mega Pack Energy Packs. Um, there's even others as well. So what what is your opinion on this? And I know you have a lot to say about this. Well, so since you since you set it up with those three, I'll take the fourth one. <laughs> okay, what's that? We, well, we just ended the other conversation with Cybertruck. I think that the street is not giving any value to Cybertruck. Um, okay, well, we just talked about that. You just said 25000 So why should they value that today? Well, so I was one of my videos I did this week was looking at Rivian. Rivian has a valuation of $13 billion, even after it came down 15% the other day. Um, it's a $13 billion. They're making a few trucks. They're doing $1.7 in total volume. Uh, they're losing money hand over fist. Um, and there's no real path to future profits. And so I look at Cybertruck and I say, um, let's see, the equipment's in place, they're ready to go. It's just a matter of ramping it up. They've got 1.5 million units of backlog. Um, the, uh, the factory's already built. They don't have to, there's not gonna be any overhead issue with, uh, with the factory, just with the specifics to, for CapEx, for the specifics for the truck. Um, why wouldn't that be valued at, let's say what Rivian was valued at the top, 100, mil, 100 billion. Why wouldn't that, why would the stock already be valuing? I mean, we've got whatever that is, multiply 1.5 million, 1.5 million vehicles times uh, what? 50,000, 60,000, $70,000. That's a lot of backlog. And we can be pretty confident. I would say anybody that's got a brain and looks at it can be pretty confident that it's going to be profitable as yeah. soon as, as soon as CapEx is covered. And so the, you know, the very, I don't know, maybe this, 10,000th truck will already be throwing off profit. So why is that valued at zero <laughs> when Rivian is still valued at 13 billion and was at one time valued at 100 billion? It makes absolutely no sense. Now, so, I know, risk off, mm -hmm. risk on, I understand all that. Yeah. I'm still saying this is not a company that doesn't have a track record at this point. This is, this is Tesla. It has a major track record. They have a brand new product coming out that, has ma massive backlog. Why is why is there no value at all to this to this? So trip? you do you don't think that it was already built in? You don't think that was partly it. already the current valuation of two hundred? Which I completely believe. By the way, I I hate the fact that we're two hundred and people are going. Oh, that's fairly valued. I can't stand it when I hear that. But that's <laughs> what I'm hearing. No people people uh, do the analysis and they're looking at the one point eight billion uh, one point eight million cars being made this year, and you can get to the valuation. Uh, Gary Black has done it. Others have done it. You can get to the valuation just with the cars, just with the 1.8 million cars. Yeah. You, you can okay. get to so you're thinking, so you're thinking, um, so you're saying what, what I heard you say was that uh, it should be at least what, I guess if I take a look at the total market cap of Tesla today, the additional, um, uh, what did you say? Two and a half billion, uh, oh, 20 let's, billion. Let's, yeah. let's, let's look at, let's look at what is probably realistic for first year. So 2024, probably 250,000 of these cyber trucks next year at yeah, I agree. say, say $60,000 a piece. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're talking about a mass and probably a 30% margin. Um, yeah. it's, it's, it's a massive and why isn't it being put in anybody's predictions? Why isn't it being uh, assumed in anybody's uh, 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 models? So that would be, that's the one that is the furthest away. So I, I chose that one on purpose because you can back up now and you say, okay, let's look at semi-truck. Well, semi-truck is in production. Now, yes, it's maybe they've only made 100 or 120. I'd love to know more about how many they've made. I'd love to know more about what they're gonna charge people uh, in the next few months. But if I'm an investor and this is the only company, this is the only product, let's say it's Elon Musk just opened uh, the Elon semi business, 
and he's opened it up. He's got a building. He's got trucks being made, and he's predicting that he can make 50,000 of these next year. And there's pretty much everybody that's even looked at the semi-truck says they will be able to sell as many as they could possibly ever make. Because at these at 500 plus mile range um, and uh, 16 cents a mile uh, cost of operation compared to 80 cents for, for, for diesel. I mean, just go on and on and on. Everybody who's in the diesel, has a diesel truck now is going to want one of these vehicles. So if you can make as many as you can possibly make and there, let's, let's say it's 50,000, let's say it takes till 2025 to make 50,000 and they're $200,000 a piece. Do the math. And is that going to be yeah. less than 30% margin? It's not going to be less than 30% margin. It's going to be more than 30% margin because they've got an un unlimited TAM and they have no competition at all. So why wouldn't they charge what they can charge? So what is that worth? What is that stream of income worth? Well, I'm saying nobody on the street, none of the pundits, nobody's yeah. got it in their model at all. Zero. <laughs> <laughs> so, how, if, if you're a financial analyst, how much would you be putting in? Again, if you look at those numbers. Gets, which which one? Yeah, because they don't have, um, yeah. I think some people were saying that they're waiting for it to be a real production line. <laughs> but why? Did they wait for that for Rivian? Rivian didn't have a building. They had a drawing. They didn't have, a, they didn't have any production at all. They were valued at $100 billion. Yeah. Same thing for Lucid, same thing for some of these others. Uh, Polestar is maybe a, a, a nicer, uh, they have a little, you know, they have some production, they actually have some cars, but still the amount of valuation they're placing on these companies. I'm saying, I'm saying that with Tesla, it comes down to the fact that it's a conglomerate. It's like Apple mm -hmm. was, it's like General yeah. Electric was, it's a conglomerate. Yeah. And it's right now, 85% of revenues are automobiles. They're not cyber trucks. They're not semis. They're not energy. So because 85% is automobiles, everybody just values it based on automobiles and it makes no financial sense at all. Well, let's talk about energy, your favorite topic. You've been talking about this for quite a bit. The whole Tesla community is getting hot on this. At the Investors Day, we had them, we heard them kind of, first of all, reiterate the one in one terawatt per hour not only did they say 2030, they said even faster than 2030. They're going to do it as soon, as soon as possible. Then they reiterated the hundred uh, the contracts for 100 megawatt hour per year. And it's like more than what we were all thinking, correct? What was your reaction to that? Well, once again, this is an unlimited TAM. Uh, Elon has said it over and over again. It's an unlimited TAM. There is no limit. Because what's happened over the last, I, I started to do this research just a few months ago, and I was shocked to find out. I was like, why isn't solar and wind deploying even faster than it is? We know now that solar wind combined with battery is by far the cheapest utility uh, level stuff that you can put in. It's cheaper than nuclear. It's cheaper than, than oil or gas or any other kind of method that you can use. Uh, it's cheaper than nuclear, uh, maybe not to run on a day-to-day -day basis, but certainly in terms of uh, your initial investment, your CapEx. And it takes less time. You can put it in like in months versus years. So why wasn't solar and wind deploying faster? And after I did the research, it turns out the only reason it's not deploying faster, not enough batteries. Mm -hmm. So all of these battery manufacturers, CATL and BYD and everybody else that's making all these batteries, they're putting all these batteries into cars because it has a much higher utilization capacity in terms of uh, return on investment right now. But now we're getting enough batteries to fulfill the needs of the car makers. So there's extra and the extra can go into energy storage. And it's virtually, again, I'm just taking Elon's word on this. It's an unlimited TAM. As fast as the energy, the batteries are available, that will make the projects possible for the wind and the and the and the solar. And then, as those become possible, then more batteries will be needed. So it's a it's a, a, a virtuous circle, and building out to one terawatt apparently is uh, not even an issue. And one terawatt times even three hundred dollars a kilowatt hour is $300 billion in revenue, which would make it 
the second or third largest company in the world just on battery storage. Okay. Um, so why is that getting no value? And right. we have an up and running plant that's producing that is you know, visible on the street. You can, go, you can go see it pushing out these products and you can see the product on the street you know, being used in these various uh, countries. Australia in particular is huge on this, but the no Northern Europe is big. The United States is deploying and deploying and deploying. So why is that getting nothing? Why is it? Why zero? Okay. This is your favorite topic. I'm going to talk <laughs> about the bot. Favorite. They're all so my this favorite. is it. <laughs> Tesla Investor Day. So I was wrong, by the way. Um, I said that I did not expect the word bot to appear at all in Investor Day because I thought that they it, it will be reserved for AI Day. Um, but of course, they didn't show it, but they had a video. Yeah. And this video, I'm going to do a video on this because this is so critical. Let's just watch a little bit about it and talk about it as we did. But this is they showed a video on Tesla bot, correct? Yes. Oh, and yeah. It, it's like it's building its own. It, it can use its hands. It can actually flip the hands around like this. Look at that. It just flipped it around like that quite nicely. It can move now. Elon said that it can actually walk now. And so, yes, it is walking slowly. It can't do parkour, but look at it. It's able to do this. I mean, this is friggin' amazing if this is true. Um, and I saw a video by Dr. Know-It-All and Scott Walker, and they said that Oh, you did that interview. You did, did that interview. interview. <laughs> I saw your, your video and they said that this is not CGI. This is not CGI, but this is a handing a tool using a drill. I mean, yes. wow. Yes. The manipulate, the ability to manipulate, I think is the, is the key here. Um, you know, we've all used a, 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 a drill motor um, where we want to, put the screw in really tight or in another situation, we're slow. We want that thing to turn slowly. And it's hard for a human to be able to make that judgment call unless they've practiced a lot as to how far to, to push that, that uh, trigger down. Um, this device at least was handling it to some degree. It had the ability to manipulate that, that drill motor. It had the ability, as you point out, to pick up the, uh, the bolt. It had the ability to, pick up the arm and move across the room. I mean, um, these are use cases. These are, these, these are products in, this is a product in use. So two months ago, you said something ridiculous. I think you said, you expect how many robots by this year? What I did believe you say? that, I believe 200? That, no, a thousand. So you said a thousand bots by this year. That's what you said, right? And uh, everybody else was saying, a lot of people, and again, you're not an expert. No. Okay, but a lot of the experts said that there's not a possibility for them to create this bot as fast as we think. It's very hard to create these actuators, to create the actual, you know, maneuvering mechanical. It's amazing that in just, what, six months, we saw this thing and it's already manipulating things. It's already being able to, because in order to manipulate, it's not as, oh, the fingers need to move. It needs to be able to see and track where that ball, if it's move, if it's if it's sitting there, then it can grab it easily. You can program it to grab it at that location. But if it's moved any bit, it needs to be able to know exactly how to grab it at that right moment, right? I saw this uh, CEO of Giant AI. They had just an upper torso. And Robert Scoble visited their uh, the facility, and I watched his interview, and he was explaining how difficult it is to teach a bot to be able to grab an item if it just moves. It's one thing if it's like stuck exact that one position, yeah. you can definitely program it to grab it, but it has to be exactly. Right. So what we saw here, if it's, this is true, pretty friggin' amazing how far we've moved and it, it's now useful. You still think a thousand this year? That, that seems still very, very uh, outlandish. So the question that I have for your audience, uh, the same question I had for uh, Scott Wal Walter and, and for uh, Dr. Know-it-all for, for John Gibbs, it was the same question. The question was, why not? It would be stupid not to. I don't consider anybody at Tesla to be stupid. If they can build these, and, and Scott's estimate was less than $50,000 a piece, probably a lot less than $50,000 a piece, to build these one at a time by hand, three, using 3D and using some machining on some of the parts. They could set up a little line and machine them. 
and make them at less cost than maybe 3D printing. But everything can be 3D printed now. So you could build these by hand for less than $50,000 a piece, and they're worth at least $200,000 a piece as useful creatures on the, on the line um, somewhere in Tesla land. Yeah, so you, know, you say that, I said that, and there's a person named Sigma-6. He says things like this. This stuff is decades away, decades away, but it will keep investors excited. I mean, like, I don't understand, Sigma-6. How can you not have seen this? You've seen Tesla's uh, progress. People said FSD is decades away, but you can see that the car is driving itself. Is it ready for be 100% safer than humans? No, it's already three to five times safer than humans. It's not 10 times safer before it can be proved, but it works and so forth. So people are saying it's decades away. The semi is decades away. The Cybertruck is decades away. The energy megapacks decades away. What, what, what? The did you not did you not the, see this thing? And the difficulty you still think it's decades away? I'm curious. I'm just curious why people say this. The difficulty on this is much, much less. This is not as difficult as Wait. people are making it seem. The, the, the robots or which the one? Robot. And the way okay. I'm I'm not saying that a fully humanoid robot isn't difficult that has the ability to walk into your kitchen and pull a beer out and bring it to you and put your feet up on and give you a back rub. No, that's a difficult thing to do. And that is my, that might be a decade away. Okay. But having a useful robot that can go out on the line, I was looking at the videos from uh, Shanghai that they showed the, uh, the line, that 20 minute video that came out a couple of days ago when they're showing the cars and they're showing people operating on the line. And yep, here's guys at the end of the line, opening the door, shutting the door, wiping yeah. the car down, putting yeah. in a gauge, you know, these are things the robot can do now. These are yeah. things the robot that, can do now. That's a very good point. Like, you know, like, so we've seen, um, what's that company that uh, Boston Dynamics, right? right. The, the parkour and all that. Right. And that's very impressive. But you don't actually need a robot to do those things in order to be useful. useful. What matters is the dexterity of the hands and the brains of knowing what to do, where to do it. Like I was saying, right? If they can just be, you can just have an upper torso and if it's parked properly, it can be very useful already. Um, and, 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 you know, this looks like, yeah, it's on its way, put it that way, right? It's going to happen sooner than we think. And the other thing is, is again, why wouldn't they deploy a thousand of these as fast as they can? Because what do they want more than any single thing? Data. So yeah. as you deploy them in any useful yeah. task, you're getting the data and the data is now training the other ones to have that same capability. And now you've got a thousand robots doing a thousand tasks. Now they have a thousand different tasks that the robot can do and yeah. all of them can do it. This is, this is not, you know, uh, I take, I'm going to take all the credit I can take for being the first one to say there will be a thousand robots in use at Tesla this year and that they will start a line. They will start a production line by the end of this year or this year of next year, yeah. it might be the first quarter next year, and they will make a million of these robots, produce them in online using some Tesla Optimus robots on the line to sure. make these robots. And that, that that first million will be deployed next year in the real world. What did Dr. Know-it-all John Gibbs and what did uh, Scott Walter say in your video? I didn't watch the whole thing. Basically, but what did say? basically, believe it or not, they agreed with this non-expert. They said they couldn't see any reason not to. They can see multiple reasons to build a thousand robots this year and that the cost was, was de minimis in terms of the overall value of the project and that what they saw on that screen was definitely not C CG, clearly not. And this is, you know, D John Gibbs, that's his expertise. That's what he does is CG. Yeah. And he says, there's no way it was CG. And why would they do CG? It would make no sense to do CG. Just don't do it at all if you have to do it in CG. No, this was a, it was a carefully staged demonstration, but it was not CG. Those robots are ready to go. I, I've told you before, you know, I had a factory for 29 years, plastics manufacturing. I could use that robot that I saw in that video right now. I'd buy it today for $100,000 and put it to use. Yeah. I mean, if it can do the manipulation, again, it's hard to know if this is uh, maybe not CGI, but it was still very much a video. Yes. And uh, we don't know, you know, they, they could have like a million times before. Even the, even the uh, Boston Dynamic Parkour, that, those are videos. And they have shown the behind the scenes where they had like eight 
you know, eight fall, it keeps falling, falling, falling. And then they pick the one where it didn't fall and then they piece it together to make it look like it worked. True. But the hands can do this. It can manipulate things. It can roll it out. They're showing the movements and so forth. And it's pretty impressive. So, so then, you so know, then, would so you? Well, yeah. so, then, the, 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 so then the issue becomes back to the basic concept of this segment is why is that getting zero value? Yeah. I mean, well, let me ask you the other way. When should it start being valued? It should so when valued. you saw a video like this, when you see three prototypes walking around, what uh, is the milestone that we need to see before you as an investor, like, you know, take your, take your previous investment in Tesla away, take your emotions out of this. If you saw another company building bots, what is the right metric to look at before you will go, I'm going to invest or it deserves a certain valuation? Right. So then there's so then there's all kinds of investors. Some that are high risk and they're young and they can put money into something that that they tease out. But once again, if this robot can do what we saw it do, the TAM is not only unlimited, it's beyond unlimited. Elon put it at, you know, eight billion units. Um, the the potential. So you're making an investment. I don't care whether it's your own company, whether it's a startup that you're involved in. You're making an investment and you're saying, what is the potential? Okay, the potential is trillions of dollars and there's nobody competing. Will there be people competing someday? Yes, but the potential is trillions of dollars. The risk right now is what? Almost nothing. You can build these it's things. It's nothing, yeah. $20,000. Not for Tesla. Not for yeah. Tesla. Almost no risk. So you have almost no risk involved in, in developing them and putting them out to, to, to use. And as you prove the use now, so maybe, maybe the example, maybe the, the comparison here would be some of these pharmaceuticals. So these pharmaceutical companies announce, okay, we, th we're, we haven't done stage one testing yet, but if this works, it's <laughs> going to be worth a hundred billion dollars. And so everybody goes, okay, we'll put money. Oh man, we'll just shovel the money into this. Cause look at the potential for that. And it's only going to cost them this much to get there. And then, yeah. Then they have the first trial and the first trial works and they're like, okay, we'll shovel more trillions of dollars into that stuff. Well, this is some, this is so much bigger than any pharmaceutical that's ever been suggested yeah. or offered. It's yeah, the, 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 this is probably right now, I think it's uh, other than, what is it? Uh, fusion energy. <laughs> fusion other energy. than the fusion energy, this could be even bigger, right? The, the human or robot market. And they've shown that it's working, that's, you know, it's happening. So and how quickly that they've done that. So yeah, so uh, just this alone, if you're right, if Tesla was just this alone, I'd be already going crazy. <laughs> oh yeah. No, if this was a separate company and it was owned by Elon Musk. Right. And he I'd be investing right now. People would be investing like crazy. Oh yeah. Absolutely. How, how, what's your, what would your guess in this valuation? 1 billion, 20 billion. <laughs> oh no, 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 no. Again, Rivian was a hundred billion. Compare this to, Riv it, it, to yeah. Rivian. Yeah, okay. it's, it's way more. The, 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 po the prospect is multiple times Rivian, multiple times. So the prospect is that many more times and, and the cost to get into business it, it, for somebody with Tesla's brains and Elon's brains is not that high. So no, yeah. I would say way more than hundred billion, 200 billion, 300 billion. I don't know. And the end is getting zero, zero. This is what drives me nuts. <laughs> And we could go on from there to the to the to the supercharger stations. The <laughs> supercharger stations are valued at zero. And yet, how much would you give? The, okay, let's let's go let's go through the list. And uh, so the price of the stock is two hundred dollars. Let's say it's at one eighty, right? One ninety. Yeah. Let's let's just make it simple. Two hundred dollars. From two hundred dollars, uh, what what do you think is uh, if that is a fair price? And I and I we already talked about this. We don't think that's a fair price for the car business. No. What would you think it should be based on all the eight, four business, five businesses we just talked about today? Okay. So if you, if you, my, my number right now is $400 a share, which puts it back yeah. at the 1.2 trillion, you know, valuation. Yeah. That's kind of a middling number because that doesn't count FSD. That doesn't count insurance. That doesn't count some things that I haven't even started modeling. Okay. So if, but if you model the things that we know are going to happen, it's not even a question anymore. We know yeah. they're going to happen. You just model those and you put semi, it semi cyber truck. Are you going to include the robots? Absolutely. The robots going to happen. Are you kidding me? We saw it. No, I know, but it's like, uh, well, uh, what, so energy, like, yeah. no, I mean like, which, which are the two you said is not going to happen. You don't None know of, yet. 
none of none of all of them are going to happen. They're all yeah. In, that's my point. Like, <laughs> so they're all going to happen. So yeah, I would say you know if you if the if the robot probably the robot alone should be at least two hundred dollars a share. I think that's what it would get. <laughs> that's what, yeah, for sure. I agree. Because given it's uh, early stages where yeah. we're at right now, yeah. 200 bucks a share would be you know, where, where we're at now, right? right. Huh? And you should probably, and probably the, the uh, superchargers are probably $50 a share. Again, there's supposed to be 100,000 of them in operation at the end of 2024. 100,000. And that's, and that's how, just how do you... in supercharger stations. That doesn't count the ones in apartment buildings and schools and stuff like that. That's just the supercharger stations is going to have a hundred thousand outlets. <laughs> yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. and it's valued yeah. at zero. Nobody's giving any valuation, and then we haven't even talked about solar. We haven't talked about insurance. We haven't talked about FSD. We haven't talked about all these other dojo. Dojo is a service. Dojo is a service is massive. Yeah, that's going to be as big as AWS, if not, it will bigger. be bigger because it's uh, we, we see what like fifth. <laughs> yeah, top five supercomputer in the world, and then they open it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know. It's just crazy to me. So I do continue to believe that it's in the best interest of the, of the shareholders to split off the charging stations, the robot, and energy. I think those should be three separate companies. They're probably going to get split up anyway because when the company is worth ten trillion dollars, the government's going to come. Some government's going to come in. So split them off now. And this would be a 100% stock dividend to the to the uh, community. So we would, would all benefit. We would get more benefit because they would instantly be worth more than they're now. Instantly, I think everybody. I think even the biggest naysayer. I think would say that they would have some value more than the zero they're being valued at now. As soon as they were publicly separate, so we would all as stockholders we would all immediately benefit from the split off, and then. We would be able to invest yeah. more money into the new company, giving us even more opportunity in the future. I said it first. You're saying it now, which is you're was, predicting <laughs> that Tesla should actually split off companies Those three. Um, subs- yeah. as subsidiaries. Each of them have its own subsidiary right. versus it being as one big giant conglomerate of Tesla. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I do not disagree at all. I think it's actually true. You know, when people say that, you know, Elon is now running so many companies, right? Neuralink, Boring, SpaceX. Uh, I fully expect, now Now, Twitter recently, three months ago, I fully expect that he's going to be buying and starting on yet another company within two years. Well, and another one within the third a year after that. He said he needs to do an AI company. Right. So yep. that could happen. Yep. That could happen way sooner than two years. That that's, could be two months. It, well, it's right now. I think it's part of Twitter, but it could be another separate company. Yeah. No, I, 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 I there was at least one rumor that he was talking to some folks about. Yeah, but I think part of Twitter so far. As part of Twitter. Yeah. Okay. I, I, right. yeah, everything I heard was that it's part of Twitter, but I don't know. But you're right. I mean, so I do not expect that he's going to stop. He's just starting. He's going to do all these things. But I love the idea of splitting it off. Like you said, immediate benefit. Um, yeah, wow. yeah. No, I, 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 it's just um, stockholder. Elon has said in the past he doesn't care that much about stockholder uh, valuation. Right. He doesn't care that much about what the stock is worth on any given day. But he has also said that he loves his retail investors. So Elon, if you really love your retail investors, split off those three divisions. And give us a big, big, huge stock dividend by splitting off those three divisions, and there would be immediate stockholder value created. It's it, what you just said, and what we're talking about right now. It's the complete opposite of what we were having the discussion of uh, two years ago, a year ago, where people were saying, "Hey, we should have X, yeah. X, X company should be a con- uh, one company that uh, right." It was not the discussion that every company yes, should just fall absolutely. under. And at the time, I'm going, that's the stupidest idea I've ever heard. Does, now, not everybody was alive when General Electric went through their split up. You know, General yeah. Electric was the, the master's degree course on conglomerates not being worth what the sum of their parts were. 
And, yeah. um, and so GE finally got it and they started splitting them off. And every division that they split off was worth jillions more than they were before. Now there's danger. Believe me, there's danger when you do these split offs because now is Elon going to be CEO of all of them? Uh, are you going to put in a new CEO that will be somehow out of the control of Elon? I mean, at least for his lifetime, I like him to be in control of all these divisions. But um, uh, the, the, that would reduce that danger. Um, but uh, it seems to me that these projects, I, I said this in a video the other day, too. To a certain extent, the future of Tesla right now is boring. And not the boring company. It's boring because it's all about execution at this point. All of yeah, the yeah. Basic engineering right. has been done. The products are lined up. The factories are lined up. The raw materials are lined up. The cash is definitely lined up. So all of the components that you need to run a successful business are lined up. And now it's just execution. So it's kind of a little bit boring, which yeah. is why I think you and I would agree that Elon's well, looking for the next fun thing to do. Yeah. He, um, he should not be in charge of the factories because right. that's boring at this point. Right. He should be in charge of robots at this point and um, yeah. things like yeah. that. I, I, this is a very good conversation to have right now. Bernard Way says Elon's mission is not to maximize stock value. So in, in the face of what he just said, it does make sense. Uh, Elon's mission is the world. However, right. let me throw out my you know reaction to that would be that his mission is to save humanity. And one of the ways to save humanity is go to Mars. In order to go to Mars, you need to make enough friggin' ton, <laughs> terawatt ton or gigaton or tonnage of money Money. to be able to afford all that stuff. And so you need to create businesses that succeed in order to fund more businesses. And you need the money and businesses to succeed in order to create all of the moving parts. And that's why I do believe he's going to have homes, HVAC homes, mm -hmm. to be able to have, you know, uh, we talked about this, you know, habitat in the home. Right. They're probably going to get into food, solve world hunger in the U and in, in Earth, but they need to be able to create food when they get to Mars. So I, when I was at uh, the Giga Austin I was I was able to get into the private party oh. and I was able to speak this was last year I got in and I was able to speak to both Franz and Elon mm -hmm. and his brother Kimball mm -hmm. and I, the question I asked Elon at that party and I said you know using first principles how are you going to solve world hunger and then he went through talking the same stuff he's always said there's not an issue we don't have a calorie deficit that's not the no. issue no uh, but then you know I, I then talked to Kimball and I asked him, because this is his life work, and I said, you know, are you working on solving world hunger? This was like several months after that big kerfuffle about, you know, Elon, are you going to solve world hunger? And Kimball said, yes. <laughs> so they are working on this right now. And so, yes, uh, you know, is, are they, you know, his mission is not to maximize stock value, but um, yeah, they need the money. So what's no, your but he also reaction loves, to all this? But he also loves retail investors. He has already said on the SpaceX side that he's going to split off Starlink. So it's the same idea. And he's there's only one reason to split off Starlink, which is the two reasons, actually two reasons. And you just stated one and I stated one. You split off Starlink to, to reward the investors that, that have gone along for the ride so far, as well as the, the retail investors that have loved everything Elon's doing and would like to be a part of Starlink. So you, you get that. And then you also get the big bump in value because Starlink, <laughs> did you, I don't know if anybody paid attention to it. Elon in that interview last night, he said, oh no, this is actually better than cyber cable um, to use the Starlink. So what, what did he say? I was, said, I listened to that interview. What did he say? He said, he said that Starlink is going to be, is better than using the current cabling method for, for uh, delivering um, uh, internet to your home or to your business. You so, mean like faster than fiber or something like that? Faster than fiber, better than fiber. Eventually. Better, better, yeah. better than fiber. So yeah. this, this is a switch. This is a change in his From state. his comments. Because what he has said in the past was, all Starling was to do was to take the internet. Come on, we knew that he was trying to be careful with authorities. He wasn't trying to get the competition going. He said, don't worry, guys, we're not going to impede in your business. This is rural, not this. No, no, so I just had, whole thing. I had Julian, I interviewed Julian. He was like going through the version two of Starlink and the yeah, version yeah. three of Starlink. This is 
going to be, like you said, high bandwidth, laser, super fast. Uh, anyways, I mean, it's like, okay. Sorry, I derailed your conversation, but my, my, my point was just that he does he doesn't care what the value of the stock is on any given day, but he does like to reward the investors who've been there to support him all along. And so that's why Starlink, that's the only reason to split Starlink off is to create that value and to, and to help uh, retail investors. So why not do the same thing with Tesla? That's 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 all I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. Well, as long as I can benefit from that, because I am 100% into Tesla. And if he splits this off, I want to make sure that I benefit and I get stock in those. I don't know how that exactly works. Um, yeah, well, this has been one of the big confusions, Herbert, is that a lot of people that, when I've said this before, even I think maybe before on your show, but I, I've said it on my show and I've said it elsewhere, when I've talked about splitting it off, People get nervous and they think that somehow it's not going to benefit them as a shareholder. But but that's just not true because when you split it off, unless you try to screw the shareholders, which you would never do, you're let's say you're splitting off 50% of it and Tesla will consider con continue to own 50%, then every shareholder of a sh has one share in Tesla would get half a share of the new company. So you're getting you. exactly a dividend equivalent to your ownership in Tesla at that time. And so, no, you, you not only do you not get a detriment, but as, as we've just talked about, now it will have a stock value that the street will need to give it independent of everything else. And that's almost, well, it's guaranteed to be way more than what they're valuing it now. All right, this is too good of a conversation for me to stop it because William got me interested. He gets, have you guys read Kur Kurzweil's um, uh, Singularity is Near? Yes, I have. I love this book. It's a massive book. It's the most boring book ever, but basically he had, it, it really is very boring, but it's amazing what he said and the concept, basically the Singularity is Near is when the technology has advanced so much that it surpassed humans. And he's been predicting 2029, but he did this in the eighties. He wrote yeah. this book in yeah. the eighties. Yeah. And at that time, 90, one, basically hundred percent of all experts said, oh my God, it won't be for decades away. In fact, centuries away. They centuries. said it was going to be that. And then he was on a podcast with Lex Friedman and Lex said, and he told Lex Friedman, he said, you know, every year, every decade comes by and all the latest uh, experts kept bringing down their <laughs> estimates. Until guess what? <laughs> guess where they're at today? 2029. But they were, they were so far off just a few years ago. Like they were decades away just a few years ago until, of course, chat GTP shows up and they're not going, oh, fuck, maybe it's here. Now, uh, the, my point of why I thought this was a good conversation is because we just kind of like walk through the whole concept of things seem so far away. But when Tesla is working on Starlink and they worked on SpaceX, the work that they do on SpaceX the steel helps build the cyber truck it helps build batteries mega farms mega pack, mega pack factories basically everything that they're doing um that's what singularity is near basically it's all these different technology disciplines they all feed each other as they all exponentially grow then the, the exponential growth even becomes even more exponential that's, when yeah. two disciplines combine together um and and this that's what, where you know that's what's what happening funny. With Tesla. This is what Tony Siva talks about all the time. This is what Kathy Wood talks about all the time is the combination of the technologies, the combination of, of the uh, AI with the um, with the uh, capabilities in pharmaceuticals, um, you know, the combination of AI with even doctoring, even the way doctors. No, no, let's just talk about Tesla. The yeah. dojo is basically live. It's already yes. being used right now. Right. And once it becomes even more... Um, basically ramped up, right? In the next several years, two years and all that, that alone can increase, obviously, the robot, uh, 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 robot taxi. It'll improve the robots capabilities right. and right. intelligence. It'll improve everything. Insurance yeah. will be that much more accurate. Yes. Uh, it can gobble up all the data that, you know, Tesla's spinning out. Anyways, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. So things are just going to go boom. Yes. And, and yet, and yet it won't feel you. Yeah. I we think it's slow that we, that we won't feel it. There'll be the chat GPT days, you know, 
when it comes out and everybody goes crazy and everybody, you know, orders their unit and goes in and plays with it for an hour. But w- three years from now, we'll begin to see maybe some of the real, real, real changes that, that chat GPT is going to bring to the table. Um, yeah, it takes time. You, know, you, you, you get to an iPhone and it took three years before you saw what it did to the entire ec- ecosystem. So some of these things will take longer. And then by the time it gets here, you're going, oh, uh-huh. <laughs> I mean, who watches any Falcon 9 liftoffs anymore? You know, I know. Oh, it's like uh-huh. twice yeah. a week. It's going to be like two of them at the same time. And people are like, that's decades away. <laughs> here it is. It's right. You know, and, and, and I know we think it's slow because, you know, FSD, my God, I've been doing FSD beta for now a year. Damn it, how come it hasn't improved? It's like fucking yeah. one year. Yeah. It's been two years. Okay, yeah. five years ago, you promised it was going to come. Five years, and we've got friggin' robo, like cars are driving itself. Literally, I was on an airplane. I was talking to the seatmate just three years ago, yeah. and he said to me, never happened in my lifetime. <laughs> never. Now? Nobody says never. never. Now they're going decades away. <laughs> well, a year, uh, three months from now, they'll go, oops, maybe five years from now, you know, yeah. and then all of I a sudden am, it's like, I am going to be mad. Now? I am going to be upset if Stephen Mark Ryan nails it. You know, he's been saying 2025 all along. And I'm, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, no, Stephen, come on. It's no, no way going to take that long. <laughs> and, and oh, you makes, think it's going to be sooner? I, I well, I did. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, yeah, I'm yeah. getting more to the point where I'm going, well, how come... It's just not right that he would be right on this. I don't know. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when you see FSD making mistakes, uh, you're going, oh, it's going to be decades away before we can solve all that stuff. That's not the way it works, sure. right? If it can solve even one, uh, you know, uh, what do you call these rate limiting stops, these, these kind of use cases, right. then basically, again, dojo, data, boom, right. all of a sudden it becomes, you know, it figures everything out. It, it gets it. That's what happened with Go. That's what happened when... Uh, Deep Mind was able to beat Go, and the computer just, you know, failed, 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 failed for like hours and days, and then all of a sudden figured it out. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um. Wow. Okay. Well, I was very, very, very depressed in the hours <laughs> the the session we did just before yeah. this, where we were talking about the economy and the year twenty twenty three and the stock languishing. Now I'm pumped. I'm <laughs> pumped. Good. Yeah, it's all good stuff. I I it's think I may have mentioned this on your show before. One of the ones that I'm just you know, you, you talk about all my favorites. So I have all my favorite children that Elon is doing, but my, my big one, and it's, it seems so tiny, but I think it would be the thing that would be the most noticeable is that he needs to build the tunnel under the 91 freeway and the 60 freeway and the 10 freeway and the 101 and the 110 in Los Angeles. Those are all the freeways that go from the ports to the Inland Empire where all the distribution centers are. And sometimes, yeah, like, I guess, sometimes, um, the trucks, sometimes the trucks yeah. are doubled up inside lane and second lane, completely filled with semis. I see this all the time. And those, every yeah. one of those trucks is throwing off pollutants and brain dust and brain dust. <laughs> um, uh, the dust from the, uh, from the brakes, brake dust. Uh, these are pollutants that are not good for us here in the Inland Empire. And taking those trucks off the road and putting them in tunnels just that spot, just that, that would be the demonstration of all demonstrations. It would be so visible to the 12 million people that live in this, in this local region and go on those freeways. And it would be a huge benefit to our lungs and to our brains to get that stuff. Yeah. uh, Yeah. I'm, I'm not understood boring. I've heard people say that boring tunnels is going to be bigger. Like one of the biggest companies, would you invest in boring or SpaceX? And some people actually consider boring and I can't see it. And, what about the argument that if I've got robo taxi, I can like entertain and sleep in a car? Why would yeah, I care how long it takes me to get somewhere anymore? I'm basically yeah. living my life right in there, right? So like, so this is my point: is forget about cars and boring. Forget, yeah, it can be used in use cases like Las Vegas. Okay, I'm talking about the trucks. Get the trucks off the freeways. Yeah. Again, yeah. why does it matter if you've got all the trucks in Daisy Chain? You know, we talked about this, right? You and I were talking about the semis, right. all right. kind of David day, day saying along, and you know, they would like still a, basically be, train. They if they replicate st- the train business, uh, they can replace train, and the cost is going to be the same, and that's where freight becomes train. Right. 
but yeah, they would which still is significantly be cheaper. Up, they would still be taking up a lot of space above ground. Yeah, you know that could be used uh, for cars or it could be used for parks. <laughs> okay, one All way right. or the other uh, is a, it, it's huge. And anyway, that's my other my other hobby horse. Yeah, I have no interest in boring. <laughs> it's boring. Boring to you. <laughs> Compared to everything else we just talked about, but okay, fine. But he needs the boring tunnels again for Mars. That's why you need boring. You need to build a city under the ground. That's the only way it's going to happen. Instead yeah, of a dome, my, it's going to be like an underground. Yeah. And in my idiot brain, I've also been asking, can't you uh, use boring equipment to do mining? I don't know yeah, anything yeah. about it. it seems like I, I've been talking about this, which is asteroid mining. And you know how SpaceX was actually helping that project that just right. happened in October, right. where they shot it out just to see if they sh if they can knock an asteroid off just to see how long it worked. Right. I was secretly, secretly thinking that maybe SpaceX is exploring what does it take to target an asteroid to be, possibly examine it so that they can decide if I was going to actually land something yeah. on the asteroid. Yeah. These are milli, like multiple miles long. This isn't a small little, like I think the size of Manhattan or something. Like yes. That, right? yes. And so there's, it's possible for them to land something there, have a boring thing, but people kept saying the cost for re returning back the minerals. But I mean, talk about unlimited dollars and money. I mean, if you hit one asteroid with the right minerals in it, Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's you're done. But how do you send it back? Does it cost? It? And a lot of people are saying, no, it's impossible. But, yeah, but um, I, was talking, I was talking about mining on earth. So right now, you okay. Gotcha. To top off a mountain or you have to yeah. dig down in a quarry and it's a, it's a, a scar on the face of the earth. And it's hard to get people to, you know, in my backyard, you know, not my backyard type thing. So, but if, if you can say, look, I'm going to just bring my little boring, uh, yeah. vehicle. I'm going to dig in. All you're going to have is this opening. I'm going to go in. I'm going to take it all out and I'm going to just... Wouldn't that be brilliant? If he says, we're going to create a tunnel from here to here and oh, by the way, it has a ton of lithium and so <laughs> we're going to reuse that lithium as we go along. Yeah. Yeah. It's like I mean, taking you know. dirt and making bricks out of it and like selling the bricks, right? It's like... <laughs> <laughs> well, these are just a few of the ideas that I think are worth talking about. Um, and some of them other folks aren't talking about yet. So I don't even care about the credit. All I want to do is see it in my lifetime. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Appreciate this. Thanks, everybody. This was a great call. Great uh, episode. Appreciate you, Randy. We'll have another one, one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, we'll do okay. another one soon. Talk to you guys. You Thanks, everybody. Thank appreciate you. every one of you guys, and I appreciate all the comments. See you later, guys. <laughs>